Welcome back to Mr. Turner's art class. Okay, since it's going to be February, and again, I'm kind of on my Black History uh, project, a uh, little kick this month, I had a good idea. Now, I am going to continue talking about, you know, civil rights leaders and stuff like that, or famous people in the, um, Africa's ancient past, but, you know, I thought about who don't get a lot of attention, the animals. Now, Africa has just a multitude of just all kinds of animals. Some of them, you know, you we all know, I mean, you know, lions and, you know, the snakes and, you know, chimpanzees and all kinds of uh, stuff like that. I mean, we all know that. But, you know, there's a lot, like I said, this multitude of animals. I mean, so I thought we should probably look into that a little bit. Now, African culture, a lot of the uh, different groups there have this concept of duality. So I kind of thought about it. I wanted to add that concept, duality. And what I mean by duality is balance. You know, everything in nature, you know, has to have a balance. Uh, as an example, especially since I'm talking to little kids, just think of balance like this. You know, you have man, you have woman. Balance. You have day, you have night. Balance. You have good, you have evil. Balance. Okay? So, everything in nature is balanced in some kind of way, shape, form, or fashion. So, I want to show that, that concept of balance or duality in uh, the drawing that you're going to work on. So, what I have here is a cute little rabbit or well, actually in Africa they will be called a savanna rabbit yes I know it's pink but I just wanted to make it cute so you know savanna rabbits are or savanna hares as they're called they're usually brown or kind of grayish you know they kind of be camouflaged uh, with the terrain but I decided to make mine pink because I think mine look better pink looks better so but how is this balanced okay because it's a cute little rabbit. Well, it's a cute little rabbit right now, but when I sit here and I do this... Ah! Okay, so now it's a ferocious rabbit. So that's why I'm going to call this Ferocious African Animals. So, as you can see, I've done this. So this is a little cute thing. I mean, it's still cute, but we got this right here. Okay, so this is another example. Yes, I know everybody think about the animals. They think about, you know, the land animals. But, again, we're talking about Africa. They have a lot of animals uh, that run on the ground. They have a lot of animals in the air. And they definitely have a lot of anim uh, animals in the uh, seas and oceans that's around it. So, same little concept. We got this nice little African fish right here. But when we open it up, it turns into a piranha. Okay, so... That's what we're going to work on. Ferocious African animals. Okay, so if you want to do some ra a savannah rabbit, you can. First thing first, I would tell uh, any of you, you know, you need to figure out what kind of animal that you're going to do. So, I would not use an animal that is already ferocious. I mean, we want, you want to pick something that looks harmless, and then you're going to make it ferocious. So, it goes back to that balance. You know, no matter how nice something is, it might have a little bit of ferociousness in it. So, you're going to pick an animal of some kind, some kind of cute little harmless animal. And then you're going to turn around and we're going to give it teeth. So, you, I would Google it. You know, Google African animals and just look up a lot of different animals and see what you might like. You might learn something on that note. You can look at TV shows, uh, Discovery, uh you know, 72 Dangerous Animals, if they actually did one in Africa, I'm quite sure they did. You know, there's all kinds of uh, shows and internet shows and things like that, you know, that you can um, look for these animals. But pick an animal that you, you have an interest in. Pick an African animal that you have an interest in. Then, second thing, you are going to need some stuff. What will you need? Definitely going to need a pencil. Going to need some markers or color pencils or crayons. And definitely going to need a blank sheet of paper. Now, first thing first, you're going to take, you're going to take that paper. You're going to fold it. You're going to fold it in half. Make sure you got good, even, even creases. Parents, you will have to help your kids on this one. 
Now, once you do that, we're going to take this paper. Okay, so it's like that. We're going to take the paper and we're going to We'll take the paper and then we're going to fold it this side okay and we're going to fold it on this crease right here okay so we have that paper it can, and it's going to do that so this right here is your drawing surface now like I said you had to pick an animal so I, when I think, think about Africa, I think about a gazelle, okay, because Africa has gazelles. So, I am going to draw a, a cartoon to the best of my ability. I'm going to draw a cartoon gazelle, so, and we want it to look cute, so let me see. I'm just going to do that. We're going to give it a little triangle-shaped nose. Now, the mouth of the, uh, of the gazelle, I don't know what a gazelle looks like uh, fully. I know it got horns. It looked like a goat or something like that. I'm going to bring this line down. Okay, you do not want the bottom of the mouth to be above this, li uh, above this line here. Okay, so I'm going to put the bottom of his mouth, I'm just going to do that, like that, there. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Do not put the bottom of the mouth uh, above this, uh, do not put the bottom of the uh, mouth above this line. Okay, keep it right there. So the upper portion of the mouth, or the muzzle, or whatever this animal is, is going to be up sitting above this line right here. The bottom is going to be there. Okay, so you're going to continue drawing your gazelle. So I'm just going to look more like a cat. <laughs> could make a, could turn into a lemur. Like Timon, uh, what is it, Timon and Pumbaa? But this is my horrible attempt at making a gazelle. Okay. I'm just going to draw a light right now and then I will darken it in just a second so let me do this. Now again I want to make this look harmless because that is the whole point. Even though I said it is a ferocious African animal, you want it to be harmless. We're going to give it little little ears. Now again you don't have to do this. Okay, this is just me. I'm just uh, making this, making it uh, look like this. My gazelle slash whatever this animal is. Okay, so I'm going to say it's a baby gazelle because I don't have any room up here. So it's going to have a little horn. Here you go. Horn number one. Horn number two. It doesn't have fully developed horns. Okay, so you got your eyebrows. We got the head right there. Matter of fact, I'm going to go, I'm going to do like that. Just to give it some hair. I'm going to uh, go like that. Matter of fact, I might even make it smile. Let's just do that. Okay, so it's smiling. So that looks harmless. So I'm going to darken this in so y'all can uh, be sure y'all can see it. And like I said, you can pick whatever animal you want. It's your African animal. Pick something you like. You like monkeys? Do you like... I wouldn't use a snake. Again, you don't want to pick anything that's uh, dangerous looking. You could pick fish. You could do a flamingo. You, you know... Just any kind of animal. I'm just gonna give you a little horns right there. Okay, so we got and then we got the the bottom portion of the gazelle, and then we can you know finish it off if you want. Give it his neck. I know gazelle's got the little lines right there. Okay, so for the most part, you should get the idea. Now, what I'm gonna do is I have to open it up. So, of course, you will see this space right here. Okay, that is where the mouth is going to go. So, I would do like this. And you're going to make an oval shape pretty much right there. And probably above this line, above this line right here, I'll just put this little mouth right there. So, I'm going to draw an oval. I have that. And to make this uh, more interesting, that is when I'm going to give it teeth. So, and all I have to do is just triangle, 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 if I want. 
next to okay you can be as elaborate as you want to you can be extremely detailed or you can just do triangle 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 you can just do it like that and then you know you just give it a tongue I'm just gonna put a little curve right there and do like that so it has its tongue open and then I have to come on the side and then I'm just going to keep connecting it now it doesn't matter how you, you do this because this is going to be your drawing but that is the concept so when the mouth is open okay it's, it's fooling you okay that's duality right there it looks all cute and fuzzy right here it looks all dangerous Arr, you know so I mean you can pick whichever animal you want and then you can just follow the same concept you know just close it first you don't have that much drawing space draw your animal make sure that the mouth stays above this line and then <coughs> excuse me <coughs> excuse me In Japanese say somebody talking about you when you sneeze like that so somebody must be talking about me maybe they're talking about my gazelle because my gazelle don't look good okay so you're going to draw the mouth and make sure the mouth sits above this line and then you're going to draw the bottom the bottom lip or the bottom of the uh, chin on below this line continue the drawing on this this part of the paper when you open it up fill in that gap use an oval or you can use whatever shape you want but I would say an oval a circle or an oval draw teeth in any kind of way and then connect the edge the top edge here and uh, to the bottom edge here so again like sort of like my rabbit here I was able to put well I used a big big piece of paper for this so I was able to draw his head it kind of may have it like a chibi have his big head a little body some savannah hair so when I open it up I use that oval I made some really sharp looking teeth okay because I uh, I can draw real well okay I made this real detail so you can be as detailed as you want as far as the mouth goes if you want something that looks like really ferocious I mean you can go for it but you know the little triangles like that you know will do and you know there you go and you just color it in use your colors and color it up make it look nice same thing. You can pick whichever animal you want. It can be fish. Africa has a lot of different fish, and they also have piranhas. Okay, Pir uh, fish that will pretty much eat meat. Something falls in the uh, water, and a, a bunch of piranhas uh, get a hold of it. I mean, they will pick it clean. It will be nothing but bones, <laughs> probably in a few minutes. So that's my little ferocious piranha. Okay. So again, like this one, because it's a side profile, it's kind of like the same, the same concept. Okay, if it's a side profile, you're going to draw the top of the animal. Make sure that the top portion of the lip is above this line. You got the eyes, the head, whatever, whatever it is, if, it's, if you're having it facing the side. Then the chin, the bottom of the lip, the chin, or the neck, or whatever you're going to have below this line. When you open it up, you will have that gap. You will have that gap from here down here to the bottom lip. Draw like a uh, kind of like a C kind of like looking shape, and then just draw your teeth. And you can put a tongue in there if you uh, want. So it's not a hard project, but it's a fun project. And again, it just deals with um, balance. And to know that you know, like with all things, there's good and there's bad in everything. I mean, even, no matter how small an animal is, you know truthfully it has a ferocious side to it uh, it could be a mouse and to be honest with you if it was backed into a corner you know even a mouse will bite so all animals have a good side all animals have a bad side just like people you know people a lot of people have a good side people have a bad side you know granted people we should control any uh, bad that we have in us so hopefully you know that's what you're doing hopefully that's what you're doing with your art you know uh, this calms me you know that's why I draw all the time or I paint all the time you know it it calms me it helps 
helps me focus and that's what I'm hoping that this is doing for you I hope even uh, in the middle of a, uh, the pandemic I hope that you are drawing and you're taking your mind off of whatever problems you got going on and you're seeking balance you know so you're trying to be at peace you know drawing cute little funny things and all that stuff it helps you be at peace so I hope this helps you I hope this is a I hope you like this project you know again ferocious African animals you know uh, try to look at some TV shows you know like I said discovery discovery channel go online go to Google you know type in African animals and see the different kind of animals I mean you know maybe who knows maybe y'all might want to one day go to Africa and go on a safari you know so you can see the animals for, uh, for real while watch them on TV when you can go see them for real you know make that a goal you know in life you know travel see the world see see as many things you can and I know what you're saying you're just like well what if the animals uh, uh, try to hurt me be honest with you you could walk outside right now and a pit bull could uh, come attack you so I mean can't worry about all that you know if you mind your business and you're a good, uh, good person you know animals will mind their business you know you just want to go and look at them so make that a goal in life travel see the world you know don't let fear and stuff like that get in the way seek balance so I hope y'all enjoy this project and I will see you next time bye